Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, my presentation today, I will share with you a Saudi Aramco implementation of the digital uh, transformation and smart manufacturing. Uh, it's the Integrated Manufacturing Operation Management System, or the IMOPS. A few years ago, uh, so the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia have launched uh, the Vision 2030, which is mainly uh, has the objective of creating an ambitious nation with a vibrant society and thriving economy. And in line with that, Saudi Aramco has created its vision of moving from being an oil and gas company into a, being an integrated uh, energy company that has a global presence and will be the number one uh, employer in the world. And one of the most important thing that Saudi Aramco wants to do is to have the leadership role in the technological development. So instead of just being a technology consumer, we will be, uh, we are actually a technology producer. And this is in line with the In Kingdom Total Value Add a program, Ectiva, which focus on the increasing the, uh, uh, the local um, industry uh, and the local content of Saudi Arabia and producing as many technologies as, uh, as we can uh, from within Saudi Arabia to create more jobs for uh, our uh, nation. Uh, so with that, Saudi Aramco has uh, created a digital transformation strategy that has 12 different tracks that covers the whole value chain not only the IT and OT, but all other uh, different tracks talking about the HR and change management and the supporting organization. And in my presentation today, I'll focus on the IT OT uh, uh, integration. And I will show you how the IMOMs, uh, in the IMOMs here, we are creating a new stream of technologies that are unprecedented. Uh, that are forming the, the, the essence of the new era that goes to the heart of our vision 2030. So the question that uh, everybody is asking, why digital transformation and why now? If we look at the age that we are living in with all these uh, inter industrial internet of things and all the analyzers that are generating tons of data on a daily basis, if we look at uh, the refining business, we are generating one terabyte per hour per refinery. And if we talk at the aviation, it's 40 terabytes of data per hour. So this was an issue before, but with the advancement of the technologies and with the advancement of, of uh, the, 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 the hardware and software technologies and the significant reduction of the, um, the money that we need to spend on these technologies, it's becoming li now uh, like an, uh, an advantage as opposed to a problem where it will help us to use all of this data to train our advanced software, the machine learning and artificial intelligence, and to help us to make more of this new data. And last but not least, you are talking about a major generational shift that we have in our industry. By 2025, it is expected that 75% of the generation will be digital in nature. What does that mean? Those people are not incentivized by the same way that the, the old generation is incentivized. They are incentivized by the gamification, uh, earning more or higher ranks that they can share in their social media and social collaboration input. Uh, they like the wearable device, the virtual reality, the augmented reality, the mixed reality, you name it. Uh, so, so we are in the digital transformation era and it is not an option anymore, it's a must. So how can we justify the investment in this, these new technologies? The answer to this question is that it, it depends really on the, the organizational culture and the pain area of, uh, of what is uh, that you need, you need to resolve and what are the, the, the things that are important to your company. So these are the typical return on investment of deploying the digital transformation. If you have an issue with the production throughput, Go and select a use case that will help you to improve your production throughput and will help you usually to improve from 5 to 25% of your th throughput. If your issue is with the maintenance cost, implement the use case related to the maintenance cost. That will help you in reducing uh, between 15 to 30% of your total maintenance cost. So 
It, uh, the digital transformation is promising to bring $14.2 trillion to the global economy. And it is here to stay. So if we look at any manufacturer, regardless of the industry, you will see that the challenge that is faced by any manufacturer is the same. What we want to do is to achieve operational excellence and to produce the perfect product. What do we mean by the perfect product? It's the right product produced in the right time, following the right specification, to give us the, 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 the right uh, profit margin, and is produced in a safe and efficient manner. In order for us to do this, we need to have, to look at our business processes, and to improve our business processes, whether we are using Lean Six Sigma, manufacturing excellence, and we need to consider both the people and the technology. So we need to look at our people, what are the skills that are available, what are the roles and responsibility, we try to re-engineer these business processes to help us in optimizing and achieving the operational excellence, utilizing the IT and OT technologies. So depending on the level of maturity of, of the company, the, 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 the manufacturer goes from the ad hoc operation, if they have only the process control and the RP, going into planned and governed operation if they have the uh, MES or the Manufacturing Execution Management. And then once they start the, uh, implementing the third layer or the Manufacturing Operation Management layer, they will have standard process, processes across that will help them to move from being uh, reactive and just resolving a problem when they arise into being proactive and identifying the issues and uh, preventing them from happening with the ambitious of uh, achieving continuous improvement. So if you ask, we have been operating our plant for a, long, uh, for a long time now. Why do we need to introduce this new layer of the IMOMs? The current setup of most of the, of the operating facilities is that we have different tools specified for different disciplines within the plant. And if you look at these tools, they are discipline specific. The access to these tools is only provided to those individuals with a lack of uh, collaboration between the different discipline. And most of the time of our, our people is spent into allocating the data. So what we have done in the IMOMS is that we isolated all, or we eliminated all of these silos, and we have created a unified role-based dashboard that will allow you, depending on your role in the organization, to access your portal or you access it through your mobile, anytime, anywhere, to get the information that you want. The concept that we followed is the same as the car dashboard concept. We will not give you all the information that you can see, but we will give you the information that you need to see at the time to see it to make the right decision. So uh, the, the difference between the normal uh, Purdue model architecture and MES implementation and uh, the IMOMS is that the, the, the process control layer and the integration layer, usually it, it only focus on the data historian, the laboratory information management system, and the planning model. And this layer doesn't have any standard implementation that can be uh, 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 expanded across the industry. So what we did in, our, in Saudi Aramco is that we started with the ISA 95 and we took the five functional area within ISA 95 the production operation management, inventory operation management, quality operation management, regularity compliance management, and the reliability and integrity management. And from that, we started with, we developed 20 different innovative and integrated solutions that will help in bridging the gap between the ERB and the process control system. So the, the, the innovative solution that we have is covering the end-to-end -end business process. In each of these functional area, we need to know, as a manufacturer, what is the product that we want to produce. So we need to specify the product and the specification, and based on that, we will allocate the resources, the availability of the people, uh, the, the machines, and the, the, uh, the raw material. And once we have the right product, uh, or define the product and define the resources, we will go through the normal uh, planning and scheduling that will be dispatched and executed. Once we execute this plan, we need to ensure that whatever we have produced is meeting the original plan. And how we do that is by collecting the data from the plant on real-time basis and 
do a performance tracking. So we will take the data, convert it into information, knowledge, and contextualize it to know if we are really meeting our target or if there is a deviation. If there is a deviation, we will go and we will do a performance analysis to, uh, to help us to know what are the root causes of the deviation and what are the corrective action. It's worth mentioning that we are not here doing it in a reactive basis, we are doing it in a proactive basis. Is that we are looking at the normal operation and based on our plan and the existing uh, mode of operation, we will predict that we will not be able to deviate and we will uh, do whatever it takes to help us to uh, eliminate this uh, from happening. So these are the 20 integrated solutions that we have developed and as you can see here, uh, we are covering different solution in uh, the five functional areas. The reason why we have different number of uh, solution, uh, if you look at, the, for example, the quality, we have only one solution, but in the uh, regulatory compliance, we have others, is first on, the, on the, the importance of each functional area, and also it, it goes with the available technologies that are available within this area. As you can mention here in the, in the quality operation management, the laboratory information management system is covering a lot of the functionality. And what we added here is actually the, the deviation between the analyzer versus uh, the, the laboratory and to identify what are uh, the, the data that we should follow. Uh, it's worth mentioning that all of these 20 integrated solutions are, are uh, uh, done in an innovative and unprecedented way. Uh, two of them has already been filed in the U.S. Patent Office and the remaining are in the process. The focus that we did uh, within those 20 integrated solutions was not in the technology. The focus was, as I mentioned, to produce the perfect product and to achieve the operational excellence. So each one of those integrated solutions is mapped one-to-one -to, -one to the four pillars of the operational excellence. Cost and profitability, reliability, efficiency, health, safety, and environmental. So the focus was not in deploying new technologies, but rather in bridging an automation gap to help us in achieving uh, the operational excellence. So the high-level architecture of the IMAMs, it's a huge architecture, uh, but the good thing about it is that we are building it in a modular base, so it will allow you to uh, choose whatever the component that you, you have uh, or that you want. Uh, based on the automation needs that you have. So we started with the historian and the laboratory information management system and with the uh, engineering document management and the enterprise resources planning. Then we added the layer that will help you in automating the operation of your plant. Uh, operation monitoring, logbook, instruction, and advisory that will help the operator to do whatever they want to do uh, in, a, in an efficient uh, manner. And in the refineries, we are implementing the blending and movement automation. So if you are not a refinery, you can just have the same architecture without the BMA or the blending and movement automation. This layer is all integrated with an, an enterprise service bus and manufacturing service bus, two different uh, 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 service buses, and then augmented or, or supported with the advanced automation solution that will help us to optimize and to run our plant in the most economical way. Going from the planning, scheduling, uh, mass and heat balance, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the APM, the asset performance management, maintenance and turnaround inspection scheduling, and again, more emphasis on the process safety and operation risk management and the environmental uh, management systems where we are implementing uh, tools that will help us to automate the uh, work permitting, uh, the operation risk management, the emergency preparedness, emergency response. And all of this is accessed through a unified dashboard, mobile access, and a digital twin. So as you can see, this is the high-level architecture of the IMAMs. The good thing about it is that you can, it's what it will be like a restaurant menu. Depending on your requirement, you can select one, which, which tool of these uh, applications that you want to implement in your facility. As I mentioned earlier, we are moving from having these standalone silos application and having different requirement and different objective into having a common objective across all of our plant uh, engineers and operators. Whether you are maintenance, inspection, reliability, or an operator, all of them will have a common objective is to run the plant in a most economical and safe manner and to achieve operational excellence. 
And with that, we are covering the processes, whether it's uh, enterprise or operation, uh, operational control processes. Uh, the focus is on the people. We are identifying what are the skill sets available of our people and the, the, the existing behavior of running the plant. And based on that, we are tailoring the system to fit our uh, skill set and the, the people uh, uh, require know-how that we have. An important consideration was the organization structure. We looked at the, each organization, what are the roles and responsibility, and identify what are the areas of overlap to eliminate this overlap and to help the people do uh, what, what, they, what they need to do in a most efficient manner. And with that, we use the technology to, uh, to convert the data into information and knowledge and insight. So the IMAMs provide the right user with the right information in the right time to make the right decision. It it's provide us with operational insight. We can access it from our mobile. We access it from the dashboard to help us to do risk analysis, asset performance management, uh, root cause analysis, proactive dashboards. And again, the, the, the focus is being proactive, not being reactive when it comes to running uh, the op or operating your plant. One of the most important things that we focus when we build the IMAM is that we focus into the providing the IMAM as a service. So instead of having an individual implementation for each plant, we build it as a service following the cloud computing. So all what you saw before is provided as an infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and integration as a service to ease the process of expanding it. And when we did that, we, we learned from the lessons of the previous joint venture uh, implementation of Saudi Aramco, and we designed it in a way that will allow us to expand it, not only for Saudi Aramco, but also for uh, potential joint venture and external entities who want to tap into our IMAM. So it is in the process of commercialization, as I mentioned. I think there was one slide I left. But anyway. <laughs> okay, thanks.